We're back. Another episode of A Toast to Life. And this time we're in, what is it, downtown Covina, right? Downtown Covina. downtown Covina with the one and only Glow. So round of applause, everybody in here, right? So many people in here. We're sitting in your shop. What is yeah. your shop's name? My shop is called Lifestyle 495. Um, it's a little bit of a background story on the name, but it's a good name. I think it works out. How long have you had this open? So we opened in December last year. It's going to be a year this upcoming two more months, I think. Oh, it's snap. almost a year. Yeah, we opened in the pandemic right before Christmas. I want to say two weeks before Christmas. How was that, like opening a business during the pandemic? Because that's... really scary. Um, there was a lot of pros and cons, I think. I think for our business, it worked out that we were kind of opening up in the pandemic because everybody wanted to be healthy. Yeah. Um, but it definitely was scary. It wasn't easy. Yeah. I mean, you you have a prime location. You literally in the middle of everybody, the whole get down and stuff like that. So if you don't mind me asking, not to be rude, but how old are you? I am 22. I just turned 22 in July. 20, oh. 22, business owner. Mm-hmm. IG, mogul, everything, right? Like, so talk, like, I want to ask, like, your lifestyle. Like, how is, I see you go out with your friends, you do live life, but you run a business. So how do you maintain the balance? Oh, I would like to say it's crazy, but I would like to say that if I can say anything regarding, like, doing it all, um, I would like to be, like, kind of an influence on, like, I think I wake up every day of my life and I see people post, like, you have to grind from 5 a.m. to... <sighs> four in the morning and like if you're not grinding at five in the morning you'll never make it you know yeah um and I think there's definitely times where I am that person as well like where I have to slow down and I'm like you know like it's okay like you don't have to say yes to that dinner you don't have to say yes to going out this weekend like um but I do try to do it all because you know I don't care what anyone says somebody who doesn't have work-life balance isn't happy you know um Mm. I'm around people that are very successful and don't really have a personal life because they were always, you know, focused about on grind. the like, grind. And, yeah. you know, no matter how much you grind, like, there still needs to be some personal, you know, aspect to life. I think everyone could agree in, on that. So as far as, like, business, like, how was that transition to literally be a business owner so young? It's hard. Because I, has- I think, sorry, like, I think everybody... Uh, we've all gone through it that we think our prime years to party live live spend all the money in the bank account is 18 to 23 24 with no plans for the future except whatever's to come but you're at 22 and we're literally sitting and your shop is so nice so you 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 could tell you put the you put your time effort so how was that like relationships wise like with your friends and all that being so young that I didn't see a lot of change in that until now. Mm. Um, I was kind of just going with the flow, you know, um, still hanging out with friends. I, I, God, if you guys know me, I have the biggest group of friends. I think, like, it just had a birthday party, and everyone was, like, amazed at how many people showed up. And I was like, yeah, there's a lot of people that I do surround myself with. Um, Yeah. I think it's just important of knowing, like, who's your real friend and who is there just to go out with you or who's there just to kind of get the inside scoop on like what's going on and whether it's lifestyle or my life right um i've had relationships fail um Mm. i've you know gone through certain like letting go of certain people um even in the business world like there's friends that i've had that i have either worked under me or you know done some type of work with me and i just it we kind of just had to go our separate ways because at the end of the day, I do put my business first, and I put you, you know to. me as a business owner before I put anything else, right? So yeah. Whether that's in relationships with family or anything, I would say that I spend majority of my time focusing on my business because you know, at the end of the day, like I'm the one who has to make the business work, right? So your friends Dang. can come and go, but you always have yourself at the end of the day. Shit, my drop on that one ended <laughs> there, <laughs> bam. So you said there's a meaning behind 
your brand name, your business name. Yes. What is that meaning? Why, how did we come up with that? Well, I used to compete, so I would say I was 19 years old and I was in doing fitness competitions. And so that was like a really crazy time in my life because, you know, I obviously wasn't a business owner. Um, all I did was like work out. It was like almost my personality trait. That time in my life, I didn't go out. Um, I didn't really hang out with friends, you know. I was just kind oh, of lazy sure. at the gym. Um, and I worked a lot at the time, so I had to figure out how to like put in the, you know, the work I needed to put in to succeed at my shows and then at the same time I was like still working and still had things to do in my personal life so yeah um I kind of realized that like fitness wasn't just a day-to-day thing like you can do fitness every day but it became a lifestyle for me so when I thought about like what could I name my store you know you can't there's a lot of juice shops that just have the name juice or bowls or you know anything like that like there is it's so easy to find a shop that you know incorporates that has like the same name all around But I wanted it to be different, and I thought lifestyle was perfect because, um, obviously, eating healthy and, you know, all of that isn't just a day-to-day thing. It's a lifestyle. So I really wanted lifestyle, and we ran into so many different problems with it because, obviously, when you have a name, you have to take it to the state. You have to take it to, do you want to go to another, you know, do you want to be in New York one day? Do you want to be in Miami one day? Do they have a lifestyle in Miami? Do they have a lifestyle in New York? So you have to think of all that when you sit down and get that name approved. So... Obviously, lifestyle's everywhere, so we had yeah. to change the name, we had to add to it, we had to take away from it, and then it finally worked out. 495 was actually our address. Everyone always asks me about it, and people are like, you should like say it's something like funny, and I'm like, no, it's it not. Is. It's literally our address. It but is. Oh, shit. I didn't want um, like Covina, because no hate on Covina, born and raised, I love it, but it's not that cool, right? So, <laughs> I mean, like, if we're ever in like, New York, it would be cool to take like Lifestyle NY or Lifestyle... Um, yeah, like you can expand off of that yes. that principal name. Yeah. But and lifestyle Covina wasn't gonna happen for me, so I had to get creative. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! So yeah, I'm looking at at the yeah, numbers. Yeah, address. <laughs> so with with the whole, you just mentioned you competed. I did. Since what age or what at what time did you start competing? You're only 22. You competed literally three years ago. Two years ago, exactly. So my first show was actually November 8th. So it's exactly two years ago. And then Shit. I did another one in January, um, right after I did, I did back to back shows and then I took a break because it was just a lot. And I think, I don't want to say that I couldn't do it because like I've said before, you can do anything you put your mind to. Even if you think you don't have time, you have time. Yeah. But I just, it's not something that I've yet figured out how to fit it back into my life right now. So you're going to, you're going to try to put I that back to, into the lifestyle? I want to. It would take some time. It would take some getting back into it, you know, really yeah. like training for it but I I really want to I did qualify for nationals and that doesn't go away I think I think it like stays for at least I want to say a few years like I think I can go at the national level and compete I'm not really sure I haven't looked into it but I always wanted to compete nationally but I knew I was nowhere ready to um and I obviously want to stay natural and all of that so I don't really want to like go up against a bunch of people who obviously aren't yeah it's a it's a big yeah, it's huge. Big industry. I mean, the luckily the some of the people we've had on the podcast, like one of them is an IFBB pro. Yeah. Jay, um, actually Prudence that we had uh, probably like a month, month and a half ago, she just got first place yesterday at her first show in San Diego. Oh, nice. So it's funny because our our whole thing, the whole podcast is, was supposed to be everybody's like lifestyle, right? About them, about what they do. And we kind of just transferred into, like, people in the fitness industry, young entrepreneurs. Like, I want to say you are the youngest business owner that I've had on here. So it's, like, we've what, we've been planning this for the last month, almost yeah, two I've months. Yeah, I've been trying. <laughs> I am really bad at coming to accept a day. I just have, I will say, like, when it comes to my schedule, it is all over the place. And it's a good thing and a bad thing, but God, it's hard. What's, uh, what's like, a day in, in the life of? God, it's, so on the weekends, they're a little easier. I will say that I'm not going to lie and say, like, oh, my God, I grind all weekend every weekend. I yeah. try to take time off, you know. I do have a personal life, so um, my weekends are more so, like, I plan them out. Like, okay, like, I know I have to do this Saturday. I know I have to go to this dinner. Um, that weekends are easy for me yeah um but i do try to stay away from work i still promise you i'll be here for at least three to four hours some way somehow but even if i plan not to be here i'm here but on the weekday i'm usually up like 5 40 6 o'clock um that's like 
pretty standard. I don't yeah. wake up any later than that. And um, I most of the time do go to the produce district. I used to not. I used to get it delivered, and then I kind of ran into issues where I just saw that, like, the pricing was going up. It wasn't making sense for us. So I decided to take it on myself. Yeah. So I just go over there. I get produce for the store. I bring it back. Um, a lot of the times I'm juicing from, like, right when I get back to, like, three o'clock four o'clock sometimes i'm you know doing i do our own instagram i do all of our social medias so always staying in contact with customers um and then i work the floor as well so i'm making bowls (laughs) juicing um, cleaning up around you know planning my girls time you know like i make a schedule for them i'm always working with the girls that i have on my staff so it's a lot and then if i do anything at night it's either go to the gym i put the gym in there for like an hour sometimes Um, lately I haven't really been going to the gym just because, um, I am tired a lot of times (laughs) and I'll go eat and then sometimes I go to dinners. So if I go to a dinner during the week, it's like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. What's a favorite restaurant? Top three, top three. Um, I would like to say that I'm big on dinners. So if I could pick, I would say probably Nobu, Javier's. I can't get over Javier's. And then right now he is a bell. It's a new favorite. Mm, do you watch what you eat there too? I won't say I always do. Sometimes I'll go with the intention, like I'm going to go to Javier's and get a salad, right? And then, you know, it doesn't really work out in my favor because then the alcohol <laughs> does makes up for the food the, I was going to eat. What is it there? The pepino margarita? Yeah, it's really good. Oh, All Jesus. of their drinks are great. But um, sometimes I'll watch what I eat. Honestly, it's so funny, but I have such busy days that sometimes it's like two o'clock and i haven't had food yet so by the time i'm going to dinner i don't feel bad about eating you know yeah and you're like it's uh i it's mean just, I, I look yeah. at it the same way if i don't eat in the morning then i can eat whatever i want in the afternoon yeah. so how did how did that your whole journey until now like right now your mental like being busy planning your schedule having a team to worry about your friends to worry about like do you feel like everything it doesn't revolve around you, but, like, do you feel like you, if you don't function the way you need to function, things fall apart? Oh, yeah, 100%. I actually would like to say that of the biggest part about owning your own business is the mental part, right? Because yeah. there's days where you wake up and you, you feel sorry for yourself and you're like, oh, my God, I've been so busy this week or, you know, like, I'm complaining. But then sometimes I have to step back and be like, you know what, like... I'm actually blessed to be doing this. People don't have this much on their plate. They don't have people that wake up every day and, like, look up to them. Or, you know, I have girls that depend on me for their paychecks. I have girls that depend on me to have their life organized, right? If I'm not scheduling them accordingly or scheduling them in a timely manner, then they're mad at me, you know? Um, So, yeah, if you don't have a lot of your life put together when it needs to be put together, then your life can very fast just, like... You know, you blame yourself, or you're sad, or you're upset, or there's times where I literally just sit down and I have to cry. I'm like, you know what? It's been a week. Like, just give me... I'll be okay. I will be okay. Like, leave me alone, but I'm okay. But it's hard, you know? Um, Especially when it comes to, like, how the volume of things that we do, right? So, not only do I run my location that runs for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, but we're doing Kaiser we're doing events on the weekend. We have people picking up orders. We have people that, you know, want to come in and see the juice fridge stocked. And sometimes I'm like, dude, like, there's one of us. Like, there's a million of you guys. Yeah. Um, we're still small. That's what I tell people. Like, we're still a small business. Um, as much as I would love to expand, I don't think a lot of people care about your business the way that you do. So, yeah, I can hire, nah. five, <laughs> I can hire five juicers and have hundreds of juices being pumped out daily. But they're not going to be the same. They're not going to taste the same. You, you take pride in the in the quality quality of every time yeah, you juice basically i do i have i think maybe two people that i've ever trained to do so and um i don't use them as often as you know i do it or yeah. as often as i try to you know keep the, keep it stocked myself versus before i go to them you know do you think at like at one point you would let those reins go so like how you said about expanding and i think from what i've learned about business is sometimes sometimes In order to expand, you need to let others have that responsibility so you can have the energy or put in the energy into something different to make it even bigger. Yes. I do want to expand. It's not something that I don't want to do. I know that, right? But since I am so young, I think, you know, this time 
last year, right? Yeah. Just the year, if you look at the year, right? It's crazy. You wouldn't even think, I wouldn't even think that I'd be where I am today. Or yeah. Or even half of what I am today, right? So I can only think from here to next year where I'll be. Correct. I know that I'm not going to stay complacent with where I'm at because I'm not that type of person. I love expanding. I love, you know, doing more. I think I can put so many things on. I think I can put so much on my plate and, like, succeed at it. But it yeah. does come with, you know... Um, there's a lot of pro. There's a lot of uh, pros and cons to it all. Like, uh, you can be grind. How we said, you can be grinding the 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whatever it is, but there's always you're always losing in some point. Yes. Whether it's in relationships, your mental health, yeah. your uh, physical health, yeah. like everything is just starts to drain. And I think most of us have gone through it. I know I've gone through it where we grind, grind, grind until like our body is just like take a break. You don't want to, I'm going to make you take a break. I think, um, I was just thinking about this the other day. I think I took Thursday off and I didn't plan, intend to take Thursday off. I actually called someone and I was like, Hey, can you work a morning shift? So, you know, the other girl wasn't alone. Cause I didn't want to work that day. Yeah. And I was thinking about it and I like was texting my boyfriend. I was like, dude, I don't think I've taken a day off since we came back from Miami two months ago. And then I was like thinking of everything and putting everything together. And I'm like, I haven't posted a picture on Instagram since Miami. Like <laughs> I literally have just like head in full speed yeah. lifestyle and that's how it goes sometimes like I even when I'm at dinner it's like I don't want to take a picture like I want to eat this meal I want to talk about what we have to talk about and I want to get out of here like I want to go home you know? so there's more to the person behind your name like the oh, social media part god I know that I could expand my social media and I just don't I don't because it scares me not only does it scare me but I can't keep up with it and I, I, I admire everyone who does I admire people who post every day and you know have their content days and are out there it's a really job because it's a job and like I couldn't even imagine like yeah. trying to slow down for like even a day and like you know look cute and you know take pictures and yeah like, it's just yeah so half of me also says like my my Instagram I like to be more so like about the business right so sure. yes I'm out and I'm and on vacation and I'll post myself and stuff but a lot of it is lifestyle like if you look at my stories throughout the week half the time I'm just reposting what lifestyle is posting yeah um so I would love to do that and I would love to you know expand and show people like how to build a build a business or how to succeed at such a young age or everything that I deal with and I'd love yeah. to be vulnerable and do all of that but it just hasn't so crossed my path I'm gonna yet. take that question right out of, out of you so what does it take to build a business? Oh, God. Like, the financial part, the location part. God, like, uh, it, you guys would be amazed if you even sat here for, like, a whole day and listened to me talk, because I can talk all day. But, <laughs> um, so I actually do have an investor, and I've always, you know, it's my favorite thing to say, actually, because I think people look down on it so much. And not only do they look down on it, but they think you're lucky, or they think, wow, you have it so easy, you're 22, and someone invested in you, and now you have this business, and you get to go to these dinners and I'm yeah. like, no, that's, you know, my favorite line to come back with people at is, you know, I have my, a lot of the times my staff will come in and be like, oh my God, like this person said this about you, this person said that about you. And I will say one of the things about build, building my business that I had to learn was be okay with what the world has to say. Because I used to take it to heart and I used to be like, who said that? Why did they say that? Like, do they yeah. know me? Like, do I know them? And I used to really, you know, 20 year old me was so like, I want everyone to like me and I want everyone to, you know, think that like I'm not, you know, who they think I am. But then yeah. I have to learn really quick and really fast. Like the whole world is going to think what they're going to think. Right. And it's so cliche to say, but it's true. Everyone's going to, you know, perceptions, reality, they yeah. see something that you do. They see what you post. They see how you live. That's their reality. That's what they think of you. That's how, how they think you have your business. I think some people think that I don't work often. There's so many things I hear about she, myself, right? She just posted she's here. She's never here, right? Yeah, no, literally, right? Yeah. Or it's just like, you know, you have people leave. You have people that don't work out as employees, and they have a whole other story that they want to go say, you know? So it's just always something. It's always something with your own business. It's like a, like ex-boyfriend and girlfriends. Yeah, as, soon as, you, as soon as you break up, they have the worst things to say, yeah, and it's uh -huh. like, that's how you really felt? And Yeah. What they mean to me, like that are important in my life. That's all that really matters. Yeah. As long for as sure. people are supporting my business, that's all that matters. But um, not to get sidetracked about how I started. Um, one of my favorite things to come back to people saying is, "Hey, you know, yes, I have an investor, and I'm very young to have an investor, and all, you know, all of that, right? It's it's honest facts. But look at all the people around you who make the most money in the world. Kylie Jenner. You think she does it alone? 
do you think that she's the only person who wakes up and invests in Kylie Swim, Kylie yeah. Cosmetic, and it's all her money, right? Look at Jeff Bezos. Do you think that that's all his money to make his company's worth? No. Thanks. You have these people that are so successful, and they have teams and teams of people going out there and raising money for their business, giving yeah. investors who want to have even 2% of their company or even 0.2 of their company, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the people that do succeed in life have a team that knows what they're doing, that guides them in the right way. Hey, we're not doing that. We're doing this. Hey, that's not a smart idea. Let's do this. Right. Thanks. Um, I, yeah, could I have gathered together $30,000 and propped open some whack juice business that probably lasted for a few months and I put in whatever I could and I struggled? No, I didn't want to do that. That's yeah. not what I wanted for myself. And so, you know, I knew what I wanted and that's what I went after. And Thanks. God, if I was knocked on my feet, I've been told no. I was, you know, there was days where I was crying. I had to come up with my own business plan. Every little crack in this room I designed. I sat here with architects and with engineers and the, the teams and teams of people, you know, getting it to where I wanted it to be. And I didn't even know what I was doing. And that yeah. was, you know, one of my investors' favorite thing to say is, you know, his way of teaching me how to be who I am today and being the businesswoman I am today was telling me, you know what, I can give you the answers and I can tell you how to do this and how to do that, but you're not going to learn, right? So when I run into these little, like, faults of my own or I make mistakes, you know, he's told me, you have to figure it out. That's business, right? So I think I've having such a strong team behind me and such, God, they're so successful and they have so much and they worked their asses off their whole life. Like, being around those people is why I am the way that I am, right? Damn. Because, you know, those are the people that I want to be surrounded by. Those are the people that don't have Instagram, that laugh at Instagram, that don't care about Instagram. Instagram's not making them money, right? Yeah. If, if Instagram's going to make them any type of money, it's making them, like, they laugh at it. Yeah, I think people that use, like, the social media platform, obviously, we use it. We use YouTube. We have Spotify. All that stuff. IG, TikTok. It's just seeing, like, these young, like, young people, they're what 22 21 sometimes even younger and they're getting monetized yeah. and it's like all right this is and it's crazy because i think me and cindy have talked about it even my boy dylan um and probably yourself too like if we would go a whole day in our life a whole weekend of what we really do it's just like oh shit we're the same as other people yeah. except we have our energy somewhere else yeah. like fitness all the trainers that do fitness and they post from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., that's all That's all they do. They use the social media. They use their training. It's like, man, I wish I could do that, but we have our foot in little things, all these yeah. other little aspects. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of having a, a partner, I think a lot of people don't understand. Like you can, how you said, you could put up 20, 30 grand, 40 grand, even 10 grand, but imagine you have someone that believes in you or has the same idea as you and instead of 10 grand by yourself it's five and five mm -hmm. so now your margin of putting in is like all right i still have more in my pocket let's let's go yeah. do it because again we're young in order to come up with that type of money we have to be doing something ex extraordinary to get mm -hmm. deposits of that amount yeah. but it's like how you said if you surround yourself with people that have done it mm -hmm. and are still doing it they're gonna give you some of the road to be like all right here it is he, this is semi the plan. You just still need to figure it out yeah. because everybody has their own way of running a business. Yeah. Like you may have your way, I have my way, they have their way, but only you know what works for you. Yeah. And a lot of people, how you said, a lot of people look down on it. Oh, so many people look down on it. I like, I laugh at the whole like self-made thing, right? Like not okay, self-made in the sense of like a person saying like they want to be so self-made and so established on their own so that they can look back one day and say, oh my god, like. I did it. I did it, right? Yeah. And I always, like, sometimes I want to say, you know, it's so important to have people who, you know, care about you or in your corner that are teaching you, don't make this mistake. You know, what if you have people that can save you a $20,000 mistake in life or, a, you know, how long is that going to put you behind if you just have the right people sur your, that surround you with, yeah. you know, what makes you better. So I know that if I didn't have the team that I had and I wasn't brought up, um, if lifestyle wasn't brought up on the people it was brought up on, we would not be half of who we are today, right? Sure. Because you guys see a juice bar, right? That just, you know, it's a juice bar. Um, a lot of people are doing it. It's a business right now that a lot of people are into because it's, everyone wants to be healthy. And, you it's know, popular, yeah. Fitness and training is popular. So, you know, putting healthy things in your body is popular. 
but the business side that is behind this store alone, God, it, you guys would, it would blow people's mind because it's just so business oriented that like we're always thinking of the next step. We don't want to... The people that come into our store every single day, we are so thankful, but that doesn't, it's not going to keep you afloat, right? You know, we, yeah. talk about, we talk about it all the time, like, what's your five-year plan? You're here for five years, like, we're in a five-year lease, like, how are you going to survive for five years? And I always tell people, not by the people that, we can't control the foot traffic in a day. It's not about, like, the people that come every day, and you know, um, it's more about, like, the connections you make, right? Like, what's the bigger move, right? So right now, yeah. like, Kaiser, huge, right? That's built on connections who you know not really this is about who you know not what you know, you know. Yeah, not what you know yeah not how you can get to the next step on your own it's about who can you connect with to get to that next level so i always kind of have to tell people like you know yeah it's just start venturing out with people in your you people that you want in your circle you would think could never be in your circle until you try and go get those people in your circle so, you know, don't be afraid of those people. Don't I tell people, don't be afraid of me. Like, I would love to have a conversation with you. Yeah. I'm not afraid to go to the next best entrepreneur that I look up to and ask them for advice, right? Um, it's the same concept with, like, how you get people in your circle. Like, go after what you want. Surround yourself by, with those people. And I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two that will make whatever next venture you're trying to do better. So, it's a lot. Shit, damn. So... What is a five-year plan? My five-year plan. You guys would be surprised. I don't know <laughs> how things are going to go, right? Mm. So it's so funny because when I first opened my business, the first thing my business partner ever told me was, don't get attached to your baby. And I never understood it because I was like, no, like I'm going to love it and I'm going to want to hold on to it. But now sometimes like, if someone walked in the door and said, I'll give you a million dollars for lifestyle, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it's so funny and it's almost a joke, but like you never know, right? I don't know because yeah. lifestyle is expanding in such a way that we can go so many different ways with it. Obviously, there's so many things that are in the works that I can't even speak on. I wish I could, but um, there's always something that we're planning for the next step. Um, and are you just like the the creator, the creator behind all that? Or like you just have different, like how you said, your team that throws in ideas? Or is, are you the one that comes in and says... We're going to do this. Oh, yeah. I'm the one who does every single day of my life. All the girls. So my girls are amazing, right? I have eight employees. I used to have 15. Um, and now it's just really hard because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah. So I used to have, I tried out a manager. I tried out, um, you know, a few different positions. Yeah. Out, and I just kind of came to realize that I was probably the best option right now for <laughs> keeping the store in um top shape yeah and just being present right so i come in you know we if i ever have ideas for like let's post this let's post that um i try to do that on my own i'll do the videotaping i don't have the girls do it just because you know you have an eye it's your business it's your yeah. aesthetic so um i do all of that in, in terms of like the deals we do with the different you know whether it's like a pop-up or anything i you know those are decisions that i make as well um and then the kaiser thing we just got really lucky actually um we got in contact with she's actually a project manager at kaiser so mm. she kind of calls the shots around you know the, the whole san gabriel valley so we actually were able to go and take not only take juices but we also did juices at the um, hospital so we did that for i want to say it was like a total of three months um and we did juices for every single doctor at their um location so that was awesome because we were able to you know connect you know i loved being at kaiser because going and connecting with doctors and hearing their stories like yeah. it's kind of crazy again it goes back to my business as crazy and i'm like you're a doctor like i, see, I think what you, you cut do people up yeah yeah so um we were able to do that and then now we're actually gonna do another few months but we're doing our bowls with them so we'll take our bowls to them and then um they'll, they'll get to enjoy that as well i would like to get into other hospitals you know so that's a business development expanding thing. for sure yeah you you that's just a business development thing right so if you have people on your team who can reach out to people and say hey look this is what we do for this this is what we've done at kaiser like we should do this at your yeah location. like this you're building that resume so like yeah. people see your transcript yeah and we would i i totally want to expand in terms of having different locations my only worry with that is expanding too fast right so if you expand at a rate that it's a little bit more than you can control then you can also fail just as much as you can succeed right yeah i'm only one of one right now i haven't found anyone who could even come close to 
competing with what I do. Um, I would love to have somebody that works with me and kind of does what I do, but it's really hard to find that. Yeah. So um, I can't be in Orange County at the same time I can be in Covina. I can't be in West Hollywood when I can be in Covina. So it's not a matter of when do I want to do that. It's just a matter of when am I ready to do that. Cause yeah, because you're, basically you're letting, you're leaving the reins to somebody else yes. to run. How you said you run your baby while you're over there building another location. Yes. You're like, all right, I want to make sure that location is running the way I want it to. Same way this way. So what would make, sounds maybe kind of harsh, but what, it, what makes your brand, your business better than the next one? Like, say there's two the more down, yeah, or, yeah, in your industry. So there's the acai bowls, right? That's how you yes. say it? Say, I know, I know. Acai. I don't eat them too often, but we're good. Um, yeah, because there's other places that make those, right? Yes. They make juices. But what's the, why, what do you think, or what's, what makes yours different? Well, or choose like yours? I would say that our, one of the main things that I think differentiates us than any other juice bar in the city um, is our aesthetic. I knew what from day one. I, when I was researching how I wanted to, you know, make my store look or yeah. um, kind of what vibe I wanted it to give off, I noticed that in the city, specifically Covina, all the way out to Orange County, I don't think any juice bar looks better than ours. And I can strongly say that, like from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> um, That's right. I think that juice bars have tried to make it look like lifestyle 100% and you know my biggest thing is there's enough for all of us to go around um I a lot of people in life want all say evils yeah but um our aesthetic just brings a different you know it's welcoming and um it's bright and it's open and you come in and you get like kind of a you know like I want to be here I want to hang out here yeah um and it goes back to saying like it was a lot of you know, tedious little, okay, like the brick wall, the neon signs, the swing, the white, it's all white. Um, that was my main focus because I was like, you can go to any juice bowl, uh, juice bar and get um, like a bowl or a juice. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people have ever incorporated the look to it because obviously it is a whole nother capital that you have to get into. Yeah, because it. instead and, of just coming in for juices yeah. or acai bowls and leaving, you're you built it enough to where people can order that, get it, and still sit down, yeah, hang, out. hang out, take a picture. Yeah. And I think how we how we keep saying like the social media part, like if someone takes a picture, tags your business, yeah. that is just free free game. Like yeah, you're right not is. paying anybody to post it; they're just doing it on their own and attention getters. Yes. You know, I think that was our main thing with us and and with the podcast. Like I told her and I told him. And she actually told me, too, we're th talking about it. We're like, all right, well, we need to expand it to where it's more appealing. To, like, people see where we're at, what we're doing, and it's just like, oh, yeah, shit, look at where they're at now. That's the best thing you can do for your business is, you know, get the exposure. And I think um, for us, that's what, in the pandemic, did it for us. We were getting so many people on Instagram following us. You know, like, our TikToks do well. You have... Some girls, little girls, that are like, I made my mom drive me here because I saw you guys on TikTok. So, like, <laughs> their weekend, you know. What are your your TikTok. numbers on your social media platforms? Do you know off the top um, of your head? I think on Instagram we are at like almost seven k, and then on TikTok right now we're at like forty k. But um, I do. I'm. I will be honest with how busy we've been. I don't really post often, especially on TikTok. It's hard. Like that is a hard video to make. I don't care what anyone says. I applaud any person who does TikTok because yeah. you, you have to sit there and edit it and. Um, if it doesn't look right, like it's not going to go viral, and if you don't post at the right time, like there's just so much to it. And I'm yeah, like, I think you know it's hard. But um, on our Instagram, yeah, we used to do a lot of giveaways. Um, I actually had a social media girl; she was doing a lot for us. She did. She got our page up, um, the numbers on our pages up, and then yeah, we just kind of stayed present on social media. We did a lot of the influencers in the beginning. So during the pandemic, we brought in influencers. I want to say there was a time where three were coming in a week. And um, they did a lot for the business, you know, because that's just, you know, they and come in. They with that, it was, uh, if you don't mind me asking, or I don't know if you could say it, did you have to obviously just pay them to um, be coming some in? Some of them, yes. Some mm. of them, yes. I did pay some of them. And then obviously their managers work out with, at the time it was my social media manager, so she would work out a deal with them. We would just, they would come in, we'd pay them, and they would do whatever they did, whatever was agreed upon in the contract. And then I obviously had some that were just, you're a small business, you're very young. Yeah. very inspiring like i'll just go in and do it for you oh shit nice um, so it was just a mix of everything actually one of my favorites was that um 
it was like one weekend and obviously I don't know if you guys know her but her name's Casual or she does like the shop small soiree um, and she we had actually gotten her and her manager to come in and they loved it like they were raving about it for a while and then they were on their way to like um, Temecula I think and they brought I Love Sadahi and I think God she's such a big name that yeah. she probably she didn't have to do that you know she didn't have to come and post just out of the Shit. kindness of her heart and casually didn't have to bring her out of the kindness of our heart and I think that day we gained like 2,000 followers and our line was like out to like the next light like for like a, that weekend was how was crazy. that juicing part well at the time we didn't launch juicing <laughs> At the time, we didn't do the, oh, sh the juicing, like the bottled juicing. So it's different, right? We have two different types of juicing. So that was different. Um, yeah. At that time, we were just doing the bowls and like the juices we do, like that you can order on the spot that we yeah. do in our centrifugal juicer versus our cold press machine. So we added cold press in March. So that was like a new. We did, a, I want to say, three to four months without our cold press. And your presentation is everything. Oh, everything. And that's another thing when you guys ask what's different about us is, like, our bottles say cool things. I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but we have, like, a boss of juice. We have, like, yeah. a fit bitch fuel. Um, just, I thought, things I thought of randomly off the top of my head. I just had my graphic designer put that together. So, as you can see, we do a lot here, and it's always something new. Um, yeah. And then another thing is, is I don't think people understand, like, cold press juicing and I will speak on this topic right now because so many people are doing it and I don't think people understand speak the facts that business right so it's like it's almost like everyone can do it right but you see plastic bottles you see glass bottles here right and there's a there's a complete like if you're a real cold press juicer and I'm not talking like you drink a juice because you want to be healthy on a Sunday morning after drinking a lot of tequila <laughs> but no Fuck. like people in the real industry of like juicing understand that um when it comes to juicing, like, the glass bottle is, like, it keeps your nutrients, like, for, it doesn't really, I don't know if you guys know, like, the whole water bottle yeah. theory about how, like, plastic is bad for us. It kind of goes hand in hand when it comes to For juicing. the juicing. Um, like, a glass bottle just keeps the juice fresh. It keeps it a little bit more on, like, the, um, you get, like, the benefits, right? So yeah. we like to spend more, put in glass. It's um, just... What Better what you business. what you put in you'll get back basically. Exactly. Like you're you're investing in yeah. in this and yeah maybe it is more expensive, but it's the quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people and I think if you ever start a business for anybody listening, it's you can go the cheaper route sort of say, but it's only gonna last you so long yeah. because someone like yourself is gonna come in, do it better, do it better, and that's gonna knock those people out. And it's like, all right, what's the difference? It's like, all right, I'm actually investing in my product. I'm believing in the product, and I know it, it will pay off. So kind of hitting you with the left, what uh, advice would you give a young entrepreneur? You're still, you're still young, so what would you give, say, an 18, 19-year-old that one doesn't want? Did, did you go to college, you mind me asking? I did. I didn't finish. <laughs> Not all I of us. Stand, me I, either. I went to me San either. Jose State for two years. So someone that didn't go to college or didn't finish, uh, doesn't want to work, so, sort of say a nine to five, and wants to do something bigger, be an entrepreneur. What ad, like your go-to or what advice would you give them? I think my main advice would be go find people who are doing it better than you, see what they're doing, and learn how to do it better. <laughs> That's my biggest advice because I could say you know what, like follow your dreams. Yeah. Like you know, sometimes following your dreams isn't gonna get you to the next step like my biggest thing was literally I did my research um, until I couldn't do research anymore and I went to every single juice business that I knew was you know yeah. kind of doing the thing and doing it in a you know whether it was amazing or they were just an average juice bar I just was like what can I take from each little yeah place and you know put my own touch on it and bring people in and they can like really look at it and be like wow this is like different right so I think Obviously, find what you love, find what your passion is, but yeah, Expect. learn how to make money from doing that and do it the best that you can do it because there's so many people out there that are going to come, like you said, and do it better than you. So Yeah, like it, I think the more you wait, it just gives opportunity and time frames for somebody else to come yeah. up with that same idea. And I've said it, I said it this week, I said it last week and before, we live in an area and in a state where everybody has ideas. Like, we went down to, uh, where, where was this? Um, we went to, 
like North Hollywood and that area, and then all the influencers that were just there. Yeah. And it's like, shit. Like, I've never really been around, quote unquote, influencers, but it's just like, every, there's so many. Yeah. So it's like, all right, how can we be different? How can we do it better? What's going to keep us in the game for X amount of years? Because mm-hmm. social media part, I think a lot of people stay trending for two, three, four, five years, yeah. right? Like you said, like Ayla Sarai, uh, the Nelk Boys, uh, Jake Paul, Logan Paul. They've been in the industry of social media yeah, for for so long, and they're still going. And then we see these others that come up, and then slowly they yeah. just fall off. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it, how you said, it's about expanding, looking for the next big thing, and investing in yourself. Like, I think so many people are, are just so afraid of failing mm-hmm. that we fail by not just going with the idea yeah. with the vision that we have or we wait for somebody else to do it or we just wait to talk about it in the next year like fuck i should have done this last year yeah. or like right. what if you know imagine you didn't start lifestyle during the pandemic it would be completely different i think the pandemic was on our side yeah, yeah. like do you think you your shop would be here if you didn't start it then like we're going how you said we're no, going in a year later Yeah. I don't think, you know, we would have had the prime location. Um, I know even when we were looking at this location, um, it was supposed to be like a Jamba Juice, which is so ironic. <laughs> Jamba Juice was also trying to get it. So Fuck out of here, Jamba Juice. <laughs> we in here. <laughs> but it was like, all, it was just, you know, um, I think it would have been completely different, right? Because yeah, for sure. I don't even know if I would have quit my job if it wasn't for the pandemic. What were you working at uh, before, if you don't at mind me asking? Bar, in the gym. I won't say names because, you know, but. We don't got yeah, to, but. I would And look at you now. Yeah. You're in your own juice bar. You're in your own place. Yeah. So what would, what advice, I think it's very, I love, I love for people to be vulnerable because a lot of people see, again, the ending and the whole result of, of the work that we don't, we don't know who the young person was. Yeah, like 100%. maybe people think that you've always been this confident, business minded yeah. person, but what advice would you give like a, a 12 a 10 year old glow well i actually have a 15 year old sister so that's kind of funny because i have younger siblings that i know probably from seeing what i do yeah i don't know if nine to five would be their calling anymore just because they obviously they see you and they see yeah what doing and it's completely different from obviously you know what my parents did or um i would tell them obviously i think just i guess when you're that young you do have to follow your dreams because they don't really even know what they're into but I yeah think always go after more than one thing right because I think the stigma that I personally don't like and I won't teach if I ever have kids of my own I won't ever tell my kids like you have to go to college I obviously I want them to go to college and I want them to get a degree but you don't have to stick to that one thing right you go to college and you get a degree in one thing right and you think that's your calling for the rest and most people don't even use it yeah and they don't use it or they're they're working nine to five and they're you know constantly chasing this one degree that they went after right yeah um so I think always having options is a the best like the best things even for young kids right you know you could want to be an accountant but you can also want to be in into marketing right and that could be something that you do on the side yeah you always have to just be one thing and i think a lot of people get stuck into like one thing even for me yes i own lifestyle and it's a juice bar and i'm in the juice bar industry but it's not all i want to do you know i want to get into real, real estate i want to get into investing i hope one day i can invest in other people's dreams and yeah. be an investor for them right there's so many other things that i can see myself doing by the time i'm 40 like you're you're building this right mm-hmm. to basically provide the opportunity to get yes. into other things uh-huh. and i think again a lot of people a lot of young our age sometimes even older think that we need to do all this and this is where we're going to stay for the next 10 20 years yeah. It's like, no, like the world is moving. It's still going. And there's opportunity everywhere. And that's what I have to tell people. Like you can literally do whatever you want to do. There is so many different ways to, you know, have different streams of income right now. And a lot of them don't even require crazy startups. Like you can get into real estate. Even if you can't afford to get into real estate and all the testing right now, you can literally like go on YouTube and learn everything that these real estate agents are putting out there because there's an influencer in any category you're going to go Shout out to my boy Justin. That's what they did. I can even go go 
and watch this girl named Lauren Matisse juice for hours on her YouTube that is growing. Like she literally sits there and teaches us how to juice. And like there's an influencer out there for everything. That's free. That's free. Like you can learn for free. Yeah. Literally you I think. Course, you don't have to do any of that. You can go and learn for free. So I think I tell people all the time, just go after what you want to go after because the yeah. information is out there. I think Justin said that. I went to uh, YouTube University. And it's, it's, just, it's true because we, a lot of us got stuck in the whole realm from a young age. Go to school, get a great job, find your partner, get married, uh, get a house, then have kids. Yeah. The, whole, the whole nine all lined up for us. Like, even, even sadly right now, the people that are teaching the young kids how to do that, like if you ask them, hey, is, is this what you always imagined you would be doing for the rest of your life? No, I always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, dude, you're like 40, 50 years old. What, like, what stopped you? Comfort. Yeah, comfort. I want the comfort of having the, that weekly or biweekly check mm -hmm. and the benefits and all this. But it's like, I think where we're at and how you said, surrounding yourself with those people that are the same, have the same mentality of doing yeah. better, it just rubs off on you. Mm -hmm. And the people that don't have that same great inside them or that same motivation ends up falling off yeah. and then that's when it comes out that all oh, you change or this mm -hmm. about that person or oh, that's not going to work that's not yeah. that's not going to succeed when it does succeed then everybody comes back yep. like oh i've always believed in you mm -hmm. i always saw this in you mm -hmm. it's like no you didn't <laughs> i know you didn't so it's yeah. just i think for for me and for the people that ends up listening to this podcast like we finally got to know who glow is yeah. what lifestyle is how it came about and being so young you're younger than us Dylan how old are you 23 oh shit damn eh, same age same age same but age. but being uh literally again i think you're just in a better position and a, you have a head start to what life is yet to come you know what i mean like I think everybody that's younger and older are going to see you and see this podcast and be like, shit, why can I do something like that? Like, why can't I start a business or why can't I start my own business or live my own idea? Yeah. Like, dude, you hit us with gems. <laughs> you hit us with gems. Like, we I think it's so funny because whenever I do ever speak to people, right, so I'll run into people. Um, it's so funny because there's a lot of people who will know who I am, but they won't really, like, want to speak to me. And I'm like, no, like, you know, it's, it's okay. Like... I'm not famous. I'm not scary. I'm actually a really nice person. Yeah. I'm always willing to help people. I'm a cancer, so it's in my blood. <laughs> but um, Scorpio, people, fuck. People do always, like, when they walk away from talking to me, they're like, you are so smart. And, like, we would never know that. Like, we would never look at your Instagram and be like, this girl really is out there, like, living and learning and, like, doing what she does every day. And even, like, when I met my boyfriend, he was like, I had no idea. Like, literally, I would see you out and I would see you with your friends and I, I would have never thought. Like, yeah. You know, same stigma that everyone else put on me like she had an investor and he did everything for her and she just kind of lives this life and it was just it's so opposite I'm like I teach myself everything that you know everything that I have today I work so entirely hard for like I there's not a day that goes by that you won't see me on my phone working dealing with it, something you know trying to get to the next level oh my god like I need to post this I need to post that I need to reach out to this person I need to get this person out of my juices like it's always something yeah so um you never really know like my biggest thing is I will never judge people you know I might not always be the first person to reach out to people or might not be the first person to like go and you know um, collab with people just yeah. cause there's so much on my plate but I would love to and I love meeting new people and like helping people out and speaking to people because you never know what you can learn from the next person you never know and you never know where that next person can get you right like so always be open to options and be a people's person be a people's person that is my biggest thing because people can talk about you and people can hate you but if you're a people's person and you really go after what you want in life there is nothing people can say and they're people, still gonna hate on you <laughs> they're still gonna hate on you but <laughs> yeah. yeah i think you know I, this is a great ending to the podcast it's like you hit us with gems you hit us what took for you to start your business continuing motivation to the young generation and to the ones uh older than us everything so a check-in, a one to ten, how are you? Like ten, you're perfect, mentally, f physically, emotionally, uh, or one, like you need help. You're, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, I would like to say I am probably at an eight. I am happy with 
happy with people in my life. I am happy with my business. I wouldn't say my business is perfect. Obviously, there's so much room for growth. We're going to hit our one year, and there's so much that I want for us, and I want us to, you know, to see us do in the next few months to get yeah. to that one year mark or what's for the second year. But um, I would like to say that I do a really good job at just like listening to my body, right? So like I took Thursday off. I didn't really do much this weekend. I think I haven't even stepped, really went out since Thursday. I just stayed inside. Um, so I would like to say that I'm an eight. I do a really good job at keeping myself in a in good spirits. Spirits, because if I can't do that, I can't, you know, be a good boss. I can't be a good leader. I can't, you know, be a good girlfriend. I can't be a good sister. I can't be a good daughter. So, it's always important to like listen to your own self, because there's a lot that I deal with. So if I'm not in tune with myself, there's no way lifestyle will even be on two feet. <laughs> Shit, my <Mic> drop. <laughs> a little toast life with our caffeine to start our day. I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next one.